Yes, it is actually. And ni hao to you, Sally, and uh, and to your viewers. Um, it is. It's in fact actually just been surveyed as being the fourth safest city in the world by the Global Peace Index. Um, and I think one of the things in Auckland is that people expect to be able to walk around without any concerns at all and unfortunately you can't do that because there are some people who will um, be violent or steal but uh, all in all it's uh, fourth safest country, uh, city in the world. Well it's much bigger now, so 10 years ago we didn't have the population we've got now in Auckland, we've now got 1.6 million people. Personally I think it's much safer because we have CCTV or um, you know, obviously closed circuit television uh, all around the city. We have um, more police than we did 10 years ago. We have a lot more police, 600 more police in New Zealand and uh, a good chunk of those in Auckland. Uh, but of course with a bigger population you also get tensions, you get more people on the roads, you get uh, more congestion and there's more opportunities for burglars and uh, also now we have methamphetamine which we really didn't have much of 10 years ago and methamphetamine is a major driver of crime both violent and property. Well, I don't know that why people would feel unsafe generally because certainly crime is down, uh, reported crime is down 16% from 2011 and violent crime is down 8%. The vast majority of our violent crime is family violence and uh, people now report that more. So mm. I think generally it's a much safer place than it used to be, but I would say that not everywhere is safe all of the time, uh, particularly when there are people who are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Mm. Yeah. Well. So that's not actually shown up by the statistics, and I think that there's probably some under-reporting of crime by um, Asian New Zealanders, and partly that's uh, because there's often not um, not an understanding that the police are here to help um, and that's just from where people have come from or their own experiences. So uh, police show, statistics show that uh, people who they would describe as Asian uh, would fall within the 2 to 3 percent of victimisations and given that Auckland has around 12 percent of people from um, Asian countries that's way under uh, either reported or experienced. So I think that people might think that they're targeted, but it's actually not showing up in the statistics, which is why I would say to all your viewers that if they have been the victim of crime, what they need to do is to report it to police straight away, because the police cannot do much if they don't know about the crime from the first place, and it's really important to for them to be able to hold offenders to account, which is in other words, to find out who's done it and to take action, because otherwise it only gets worse. Well, I think that's um, a very unfair statement. Um, now, in Amy's case, does she has does she have CCTV cameras and yes, has, has she taken yeah. the actions? But the other thing is too, it's really important to report it straight away, not the next day, not you know three hours later straight away and one of the things that we've um, found is that actually public confidence in police uh, by and large is 78 percent which is huge it's a uh, better than pretty much anyone else um, other organizations but also we constantly survey seeing what people think when we ask people do they feel safe walking around you know, in their neighborhood in the daytime 92 percent of them say yes um, that go drops down for night time. But things like bars are always going to be um, targeted, that's not an excuse, but it is really important that um, people like Amy talk to police and particularly um, if she has any issues with English or feels a bit you know, worried about talking to police, there are Mandarin speaking uh, chi uh, Chinese uh, police officers in New Zealand who are an, an ethnic liaison officers as well, who are very happy to come and talk to Amy, um, and I'm, you know, obviously would pass on the details if that's what she'd like. I'm sorry, I don't know about Amy's case, but I would say is that that is not the experience that many people have told me, because I hear about what tends to happen, and if there's robberies or anything like that, generally most most of those are solved. What is much harder to solve is a burglary, which is when Amy's premises is uh, closed for the night and someone goes into it, that's much harder, which is why 
We have, you know, best to have monitored alarms and CCTV cameras and premises like a bar. Bars, unfortunately, attract good people and they attract bad people. And in her case, she's obviously had some who are very bad. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, why is the burglaries hard to be Oh, very hard, because mostly they're only discovered, uh, the crime is only discovered hours after it's occurred. So if you think about it, um, if someone comes and burgles your home, you're not home in most cases. So if you are, you ring police 111 to get help straight away and, and say someone's on the premises and you will get help because that's called a priority call out. If, however, you come home and you've been away on holiday for two weeks and you've found you've had a burglary, very hard to catch from there unless there are other clues and unless the burglars have kept, have left fingerprints or DNA that's obviously theirs, not someone else's, and unless there's some sort of trial. So there are things that we can do to protect ourselves and our property. One of them is, in my personal view, monitored alarms are very helpful. And if you have jewellery, don't leave it out in the open and don't let people know where it is. So things like that take very you know, sensible approaches. But in New Zealand, um, all the statistics show against other countries that we do very well, but you have to understand too, we can't stop everybody doing what they do, unfortunately. What I've said is that we need to have more police in the yes. future. I think police are coping very well now, but they need to have more in the future. Mm -hmm. And mostly that's around the cause for family violence. So family violence, unfortunately, uh, amounts to 42% of a frontline police officer's time. It's extremely difficult, plus mental health issues. So police are often called to suicide attempts or people with very serious mental health issues and they have to respond. That gets priority over other matters um, and I think that that should get priority over other matters but it does mean it puts pressure on police in these other areas. So anything that we can do as responsible homeowners uh, to try and keep down the rate of burglaries is a very helpful thing to do. But look, I think the fact is burglaries are normally um, committed in order to get money for drugs. And anybody in the community that you know about who is selling methamphetamine or pee to people in New Zealand, those people are driving the crime rate. And it's them driving burglaries. So you know, if I'd say to anyone listening, if you know about them, please advise police. Well, there's lots of those things, actually, but I can't tell you those because I'm in discussions with the Prime Minister and Cabinet, so there's uh, work going on right now. It's understandable that people think, well, I want to be able to wander around Albert Park at night. Actually, you shouldn't. You know, it's about being sensible, about staying in light, well-lit places, walking down the road rather than through Albert Park, things like that. These are precautions that people need to take into account. Um, if you're living in New York, you wouldn't walk through Central Park at night by yourself. You would, you know, you'd be a bit more careful. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is, New Zealand has very much a safe um, reputation, and we need to retain that. But we also need to have that in reality. So when I look at the victimisation figures for Asian New Zealanders or Asian people living in New Zealand, identify as Asian then those figures are between 2 and 3%. That is so far below the population base in Auckland that um, I think either it's, there's no targeting or secondly, people don't report it. And I think people often don't report it because they don't, aren't used to reporting and they don't, aren't used to going to police for help. And in New Zealand, people can be rest assured that they can go to police for help. But I'd also say if you are anywhere and you see crime being committed, what happens to you, you ring 111. 111 is a priority call line and ask for police, and police put priority on that for everything. Well, it might do if it's a methamphetamine case, so it depends what's going on, but the fact is, is that we have very good resolution rates, not in burglaries, I'm sorry to say, but in violence cases, um, and they will always take priority over property cases, as they should do. Mm -hmm. So if there's an assault or robbery, um, it's very difficult, Sally, to tell you that anything other than that they are very often solved. And in the inner city, there's CCTV cameras. They're monitored by police. 
um, and people often get, uh, the offenders get found quite quickly. Oh, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but I can, I've seen the banks of the cameras and they're um, all over Auckland Central, there are CCTV cameras. But, um, you know, of course, people can try and hide them and in bars and places like that, obviously, um, which is why bar owners need to be very aware of the safety of their patrons and their staff and themselves and to have the sorts of mechanisms and also um, to be very careful who they have in those bars. It's very difficult um, when that happens because what you haven't got is you haven't got the police's version of events. Because I've had people say that to me and recently, a few months ago, I had some people who, who went out into the media and said that they'd been robbed in their shop and that nothing had happened, the core police and nothing had happened. I actually investigated that myself and I found out that the police had sent something like seven police officers within five minutes, that they even sent a helicopter, they sent everything that they could send and these people went on in the media and actually they lied. And actually that's really distressing for police because they've got everything, every phone call to police on the 111 system is recorded so they know exactly when they alerted, when they sent police and I think before, before you um, think everything's happened the way people want it to be seen, sometimes it's best just to check because I was really shocked when I found out that the police had also sent in this particular case dog handlers with police dogs to track the people and then to have people go on in the media and say, oh no, nothing happened. I mean, it was a really was unfair mm -hmm. and really awful for police to hear that. Well, I think what it is, is that it's uh, sometimes people, for instance, uh, when, when I look at those statistics, I have to work off those statistics. So people may think that that's harmful, but actually when we are now listed as fourth safest city in the world, or first, fourth, sorry, safest country in the world, um, it's hard to believe that that's actually affecting that reputation. And I think if you consider us compared to London or even Sydney or Toronto or any other, any other major city, it is hard to imagine a safer city that's a city of this size um, with the population it's got and the opportunities. But there's always, wherever there is a lot of alcohol or drugs, you're going to have violence, you're going to have things like that. And what I'd say to your, your viewers is, if you know of people who are selling methamphetamine in this country, please ring police. If you don't want to ring police, ring Crime Stoppers, which is, which is a uh, completely anonymous um, tip-off line, because methamphetamine is behind, according to police, behind um, many of the burglaries in this country, and they're behind, it's behind a lot of violence. So if people care about it, let us know. Well, I think people need to always be very careful, and I'm very concerned not to ever blame victims because I think, you know, that's that's really unfair if someone's been a victim of a crime, particularly a violent crime. But I think it's always important to think about if you're around the in a city or wherever where there's a lot of people, stay in places where there are a lot of people. Don't go off down a back street at night. Um, be careful around, don't go through parks at night, particularly by yourself, if there's a big crowd of you, that's probably fine. Um, but just think about, don't leave um, valuables in your cars. Uh, often people do that and then they wonder what, why they got broken into, because there's a you know, computer sitting there or phone. Um, be very, just, just always think about um, what would happen if someone came out and, and wanted to attack you and steal your handbag, for instance. So. This is actually, I say, a very safe city, very safe country, but you also understand that there are people who are violent or are thieves, and, you know, we get very, we used to have a little spate at one stage of bag snatchers. Um, we haven't had that for a while. Um, so it's just about being careful and thinking about how you're presenting yourself and are you putting, are you in a vulnerable position? So, you know, I would not personally walk around the inner city at three o'clock in the morning by myself because I am a, a, a woman of you know past 50 years old by myself and I'm not going to present to someone who is a violent person as someone who could be a victim. So we live in a democracy where people can wander around any time of the day or night and unfortunately I always think 
if you're going to be that, think about your own safety as well. Um, and actually I would say to people, always think about what happens if somebody is drunk or drugged or violent and they want to steal something, you know. So the other thing is, better to lose a handbag than to lose life. So don't worry about the property when it comes to things like that. Your life and your safety is far more important. Of course they can, self-defence, absolutely, but is allowed in New Zealand. self-defence is quite a grey area. Well, it's always grey because it's a matter of, is the response reasonable? So what people cannot do in New Zealand is to carry knives and then to use those, for instance, in self-defence. So it's about self-defence, but actually it's also about keeping yourself safe in the first place. So be careful about where you park, be careful. These are nothing more than I would say to anybody in any city in the world. And I also say, Sally, not all countries report in the media the crimes that they hear. I mean, I've, I know some countries where very little is said because it might be embarrassing. Um, in New Zealand, everything's reported. So, anything's. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like when I'm in London, I don't go wandering around at night by myself. I wouldn't do the same here. I'm perfectly happy in the suburbs, but there are some parts I wouldn't. And that's just because there are a lot of people around. Some of them might be drugged, some of them might be drunk. Oh, I'm sorry, but Chinese people do not get um, attacked more frequently according to the statistics. So when we've got 2 or 3% victimisation in crime compared to 15% or 12% of the population in Auckland, that is not more. Um, so I'm sorry, that's just simply not true. And what will be happening because you are a Chinese um, TV studio, uh, station, people who are listening to you are Chinese, so that's what you will be hearing, but actually that's not compared to the rest of the population. So if people feel that it is, they've got to report it to police, because otherwise it doesn't show that, that at all. So I just, I don't believe it at all, because I haven't got any evidence of it. Well, it's not, it's not specifically about Chinese New Zealanders or um, anybody. This is, this is, no, this is very clear. I want to make this very clear. New Zealand is the fourth safest country in the world. We are a very safe country and a very safe city. The fact that the Minister of Police, like me, can wander around Queen Street and trot down here and I don't have to have guards with me or police with me, that tells you just how safe this is. And even though, you know, and it's the same with my ministerial colleagues, the Minister of Finance can walk up and down Queen Street and nobody will attack him. Because this is a very safe city. That is not true in most countries in the world. But we all need to be very aware of where we are, what we're carrying, what we're obviously doing, and what time of the day or night it is. It is no more than sensible advice that I was told when I was a younger person. So I'll always be careful about that.